In this video, we're gonna start simple and just connect our Pico to a local wireless network and then query or connect to some websites through the internet. This isn't gonna let us browse the internet like we do through a normal computer. The Pico is nowhere near powerful enough for this and just three frames of this video is nearly enough to completely fill the Pico's RAM and crash it. So we can't browse the web, but we're gonna be able to send or receive text-based data from specific websites. All right, let's get into it. We aren't gonna need any additional hardware, obviously just a Pico W and a cable to connect it to the computer. And we're gonna go ahead and code this up from scratch and kind of just explain what everything does along the way. And as always, we'll have the full completed code on our course page, link below for our YouTube audience. First of all, let's import the libraries that we need. We're gonna need network and we're gonna need micro requests, which are both part of the standard MicroPython library. And we're also going to import time. So starting off, I've gone ahead and created some variables with our Wi-Fi details in them. And this is just the details to your Wi-Fi network. It might be your home router, or you might be using a wireless hotspot. Both work as long as you have an internet access through them. Next, we're going to create a function which is going to connect us to the internet. Now, wireless code is going to get very messy very quickly, so it is always a good idea to use functions wherever you can. So we start with these three lines, which are doing the heavy lifting of connecting the Pico to our wireless local network. So we start by setting up an instance of it, similar to how we might set up a pin as a PWM or an ADC input. Then we turn on our hardware with active.true, and if you wanted to turn it off for maybe power saving reasons, you could use active.false. And then we tell the Pico to connect to our Wi-Fi using our credentials that we put up here. Now, another very important thing when using wireless on the Pico is using print statements to debug or to see what's going on, because there's a few steps that it can fail at. And by putting print statements in our code, we can see where it fails. So here we're saying, while it's still trying to connect, it's gonna print connecting, please wait, and then go to sleep. And then once it has connected, it'll break this while loop and print connected. And this is easy to develop through a shell, but it might be a smart idea to pop an OLED screen on so you can see what your wireless project is doing. And this line here is going to be especially important in the upcoming videos because it's the IP address of our Pico on the wireless network. If config is a list that holds all of our connection data and the zeroth element of that is the IP of the Pico. Now let's test that function by just calling it like so. And if we hit run, we can see that we're gonna be printing connect, connecting, connecting, please wait. And with that print line, we know that our Pico has successfully connected to our Wi-Fi network. Another really handy thing for when dealing with wireless on the Pico is something called error handling. And we're gonna do this through the try and accept functions. So what this try and accept is going to do is it's going to try the code that we put in the try. And if there is an error with it or something happens and the Pico crashes, it's going to run whatever we put in the accept. So if we try to connect and that fails or gives us an error, it's gonna print that there was an error so we can see what's going on. And this is not only a handy tool in wireless related things, but any code you write can really benefit from this try accept functions. So now we've got a Pico connected to our local network. Let's Let's get it to then send out a request to a website on the internet itself. So let's start by creating a variable with the site that we want to query. I'm going to copy and paste that and we're going to talk about what sites you can use later in the video. So here we tell the Pico to make the request to the site and all the information that we get from that is going to be stored in this variable R here. And then all we do is we just print out R. Now when that data comes from our site, it's going to be in a JSON format. And this .json here just turns it into nice Python readable strings. It's very similar to how we use .decode in our UART video. And then we end our request with dot .close. And we also put it in our accept to just close any loose ends in case it throws us an error. And something else I just wanna add in here, I just wanna add some more uh, print statements so we can see what's going on. And I'm just gonna say we are querying uh, the site and just print it out like so. And if we hit run, we should be able to see that it connects and that it's querying and that we get that information back. How cool is that? We got our $10 microcontroller connecting to a server over on the other side of the world, pulling information back and storing it as a data that we can use. That is mind boggling. 
And this site that we're querying just returns the exact date and time to our Pico. And we could use some string manipulation to extract the data that we actually want from it. And this can get a bit technical. It can be really easy or hard depending on what information you're getting back. And with that, we have just completed our first stepping stone in our wireless chapter. Now, that might seem a little bit contrived or a little bit obscure, just querying the time from a site, but there is a wealth of websites out there that you can query to get really useful information for your project. But we can't just connect to any random site. It needs to be a very specific one that returns some sort of JSON string. So for example, if we try to connect to even just Google, for example, let's run that. The Pico is probably going to crash because it's not going, yeah, as you can see, it doesn't like doing that. But you'll find tons of sites that can return this information, like how about a random dad joke? As I get older, I think of all the people I lost along the way. Maybe a career as a two guide wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> or a random cat fact. Maybe you can get a random Zen quote and connect a display to the Pico to have random quotes just floating around your house. Outside of random jokes and facts, there are also sites that have useful technical information, like how about the position of the ISS in real time, or global exchange rates to a specific currency, or how about all the earthquakes detected by the USGS in the last hour. We will have a link to all of these and some more on the course page, but if you find any or know of any cool or helpful sites to get information with a Pico, let us know so that other people can find them. So, three key takeaways. One, we can use the network library to connect the Pico to a local wireless network. Two, when programming to use the wireless capabilities on the Pico, it's always a smart idea to use error handling with try accept and use print statements to help debug your issues. And maybe also using functions is a smart move. And three, as long as your wireless network has internet access, the Pico can query websites to receive useful information.